Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the Prophet Sallallahu best friend his entire life. They were best friends because they shared the best of akhlaq, the best of qualities and characteristics. And as soon as the Prophet Sallallahu received the message of revelation, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, I believe you. I know who you are. You don't have to give me a lengthy explanation. You don't have to split the moon for me. You don't have to move a mountain. You don't have to turn Safa into gold. I know who you are. I know you're a prophet. I know that your character has been divine all of these years, becomes the Prophet Sallallahu greatest ambassador and continues to be his best friend. His entire being for the next two decades is going to be trying to protect the Prophet ﷺ. Literally taking a beating in front of the Kaaba, defending the Prophet ﷺ. Waking up from a coma and saying, where is Rasulullah? Where is Rasulullah? Take me to him, I need to see him. Protecting him with his full being in the Hijrah. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in the Hijrah would be in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Then he'd be to his right, then he'd be to his left, then he'd be behind him. And Rasulullah Sallallahu said, what are you doing? He said, I'll think about an enemy perhaps coming from this direction. So I go there and then I think maybe they're there. So I go there, so I go there. Everything is about protecting him. Putting his foot on a hole in the cave while the Prophet Sallallahu falls asleep in his lap and a scorpion drives itself into his foot. And the tears of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu falling on the Prophet Sallallahu But he doesn't even want to wake him up. He will starve with the Prophet ﷺ. He will go on every journey with the Prophet ﷺ. Every morning when I wake up, if I'm Abu Bakr, I'm thinking how quickly I can get to his home and what are me and Muhammad ﷺ doing today? And when the Prophet ﷺ speaks to the people, the Prophet ﷺ says, I, Abu Bakr and Umar went and did this. I, Abu Bakr and Umar saw this. I, Abu Bakr and Umar heard this. The Prophet ﷺ says about Abu Bakr and Umar, As-sam'u wal-basar. They are my hearing and my sight. Any Anywhere you saw the Prophet you saw Abu Bakr as-Siddiq anhu. Your whole life for two decades revolves around this man. You know, one of my most moving stories of the seerah is the story of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu on the day of the conquest of Mecca. The story of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and his father, Ibn Abi Quhafa. Ibn Abi Quhafa, he was somebody who opposed Islam throughout his whole life. That man, Ibn Abi Quhafa, when Mecca was conquered and he was now 90 years old, half blind, complete, immobile, he couldn't walk. Everybody has to embrace Islam at this stage. Ibn Abi Quhafa was brought in a blanket, you know, they didn't have wheelchairs. He came up in a blanket and a quilt. They carried him to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now he's going to accept Islam. And he is brought to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ says to Abu Bakr, Why didn't you leave the Shaykh, meaning the old man, in the house? I would have come to him out of honor for Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr said, No, Ya Rasulullah, it is more befitting he comes to you. And when Ibn Abi Qahafa put his hand out, you know, they would give an actual oath of allegiance, right? When you accepted Islam at the hands of the Prophet, somehow fortunate they were, you would actually put your hand in his hand. And there would be an actual oath of allegiance. When the hand of Ibn Abi Qahafa touched the hand of the Prophet, ﷺ, Abu Bakr began to cry. Listen to this and if this is not love if this is not mahabba then what is mahabba because ibn abi qahafa by the way was good friends with abu talib that generation right they're gone now they were close buddies back in the day and the memories of abu talib and abi qahafa are linked together and abu talib you know who abu talib is right abu talib literally a father figure to the prophet literally raised him actual uncle full-blooded uncle raised him since a child in his household supported him defended him i mean the prophet closest you know actual father figure figure is Abu Talib. Ibn Abi Qahafa is basically a friend of Abu Talib. All the memories are coming back. And Abu Bakr begins to cry. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, how I wish instead of my own father, if your uncle Abu Talib were still alive and his hand was in your hand rather than my own father's hand. He's willing to sacrifice his own love, his own kith and kin. Not myself. It's easy to give yourself up. I will sacrifice my family for you, O Messenger of Allah. I'll give up everything to protect you. And here at the conquest of Mecca, Abu Bakr's genuine love. It's just an unplanned moment. He's overcome with emotions. All the memories come back. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I want you to know my love for you is so much. I would rather your uncle be here than even my own father because I know how happy you would have been had he been alive and seen this success and all that we're doing.
And I take you to a moment that is familiar to you. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he said the Prophet Sallallahu stood up on the member. So put yourself in Abu Bakr's shoes. You're sitting in Masjid al-Nabawi right now. You're Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. The Prophet Sallallahu just ascended the member. Are you there? Mentally, I want you to be there. And the Prophet Sallallahu starts to speak. Prophet Sallallahu says, Allah gave a choice to one of his slaves between everything in this dunya, everything this world has to offer, and that which is with Allah. And that slave has chosen that which is with Allah. Everyone sitting in the masjid thinks this is a generic khutbah. But I know this man. Abu Bakr's heart is in sync with the Prophet Sallallahu heart. Abu Bakr's opinion always matches the opinion of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi The greatest human being that the sun has ever risen or set upon that wasn't a prophet of Allah. This man Abu Bakr, and he's in sync with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he knows what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just said. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, collected, wise, coherent, calm, intelligent, breaks down into tears. And everyone else in the masjid is looking at you. You're Abu Bakr. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi on the member. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi loves you more than he loves any other person in the audience. And there's this silence in the crowd. And the only thing for a few moments that can be heard is your weeping. Abu Bakr. Abu Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, we were all confused. Why is he crying so much? What's wrong with him? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi lets Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu cry. And as Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is trying to collect himself. And there's this moment where you have an audience where everybody else is there, but there are two men that are interacting and everybody else is an observer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi on the member and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in front of him breaking down into tears over what appears to be a generic khutbah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he goes on to say the person who has done more for me than any other person not just with their money with his friendship he's talking to everybody else while Abu Bakr is crying remember you're Abu Bakr and you're listening to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says if I was to take an exclusive friend other than my Lord it would have been Abu Bakr but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says but it's the brotherhood of Islam and the love that bound us through that Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ said, all these doors to the masjid, shut them, except for the gate of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq Everybody else is watching this conversation between the Prophet ﷺ on the minbar and Abu Bakr who is sitting between everyone and crying. And Abu Sa'id says, we understood later on that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about himself. He was the one who was given the choice between this life and the next. And none of us understood it, except for Abu Bakr that the Prophet ﷺ just announced his death. What's left of this life? What sweetness do I still enjoy of this dunya? And the irony, subhanAllah, that when the moment of the death of the Prophet ﷺ actually came, who was the one man who could stand up, collected, coherent, in pain, but with full perspective, and guide the entire ummah through that moment? It's Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. When the Prophet ﷺ announced his death, Abu Bakr was the only one crying in the masjid. And when the Prophet ﷺ actually died, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who's the only one who can stand up now in the masjid and help people make sense of what just happened. And he says, look, whoever used to worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed. But whoever used to worship Allah, Allah is ever living, he does not die. And he recited the ayah, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was but a messenger of God. Other prophets and messengers have passed before him. But if he dies, are you going to turn back on your heels? 